Thank you. That's helpful. Thank you, John, and, and thank you, Terry. That uh, so I um, I think this is fairly straightforward. Um, we spend a lot of time with CEQA, more more time than I, I would like um, often, um, and all of us have, and we've all suffered the consequences or enjoyed the benefits, but. What we have is the, is the beginning, really, of the CEQA process. We have a draft EIR. I know that in Pasadena, we have a, um, a series, pages and pages of comments uh, on, on the EIR. Uh, technical questions, as are suggested in the, in the document, that, in the PowerPoint that was presented to us tonight. And I'm confident, I'm, uh, without sort of insulting anybody, that most of the people in the room have not read 200 of the 20,000 pages uh, of the EIR. I've, I've been through a couple of hundred pages, and, uh, and then I sort of run out of steam. Uh, but I think that there are that there's a lot of valuable data in there. My guess is that most of you haven't made a real effort to assimilate it. So for you to be asked by the Transportation Committee to take a definitive position, an advocacy position, which is what John presented to us, um, is not consistent with the CEQA process. It, what we're not being asked to do is to take an advocacy position. The draft EIR process is to provide information. As you all know, the EIR process in CEQA is designed to provide good information for the decision makers, who I guess in this case are Metro and, and uh, Caltrans, to make an informed decision and to be sure they understand what all the consequences are. If the request coming from the Transportation Committee as was suggested in the agenda that, that I got, was to uh, instruct staff to forward comments. I thought that related to technical comments. There are no technical comments that have been proposed here tonight. There are no comments at all apart from an advocacy position with regard to a project that clearly will have a detrimental effect on this organization. And I agree that uh, unity is, is not unanimity. I don't think we have to, t I would not take a position that we have to have a unanimous decision on every matter that comes before us. Most of the stuff comes before us is not very controversial. It's rare that in, the, in the years that I've served on this COG, it's probably six years now, uh, that I've seen us have a knockdown, drag out fight on an issue. This is a knockdown, drag out fight. This is a project that poses an existential threat to some of the communities that, that, that uh, would be confronted with it. So it's not fair to say that if we can't have a unanimous position, um, that's not, it's not the same as unity. It's a very different thing. The most important thing of all is that there's no real value in us taking an advocacy position now. I can't imagine why we would antagonize a significant portion of the, uh, of the membership of this organization and threaten the future of this organization for what? Um, this is not a critical uh, process, a, a critical requirement of the process that the San Gabriel Valley COG in its wisdom take an advocacy position on a draft EIR when there are thousands of unanswered questions that will be answered during the course of the EIR completion and the final EIR. And so I can't imagine why we would take it upon ourselves to threaten the future of the organization and take an advocacy position. The fact that this project has been hanging fire for 40 years or more uh, does not suggest that we're tired of it and we should just bring it to a conclusion at this moment. The reason it's been hanging fire is because it's a disruptive project and the current project that's being studied has not been studied for 40 years. The analysis, the, the active analysis of what's before us now has been underway for a relatively short period of time and has a series of profound technical questions that have not yet been answered. So I think, really, it's, it would be irresponsible of this organization to take it upon itself to adopt an advocacy position. I think the other thing you need to understand is there will be no shortage of technical comments that will be coming and advocacy positions coming from various people around this table, the communities around this table and others, uh, giving the, the uh, decision makers the benefit of all of those questions and the answers that, that will come to them. So I think we would be very foolish to move ahead with the recommend with, with what is apparently the recommendation of the Transportation Committee, which is not to have us ask a question or make technical comments on the EIR, but to advocate for one particular alternative. Thank you.